Welcome everyone to the Heidelberg Engineering Academy. Thank you for joining our course, FA and ICGA with the Spectralist. My name is Eva Kroniker and I'll be your moderator today. As you notice, all of your phone lines are muted and this just helps prevent any feedback on the line during the course. However, since this is an interactive forum, please feel free to ask questions at any time. And now without further ado, I'm pleased to present Chris Wong. Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about doing ICGs and FAs on the Spectralis. In this webinar we're going to review the Spectralis and then geography, the touch panel and acquisition screen, lens choices, acquiring other modalities, acquiring the FA or the ICG, creating an overview report, and, and we're going to look at some example images. So to start, we're going to look at the spectralis and angiography. As you all probably know, the, the spectralis has the true track eye tracking, which makes all your images nice and clear. You're also able to do multiple different modalities of imaging, imaging modalities at the same time. And you're also able to do videos for the transit phase of the angiographies. So what is an angiography? In the case of ophthalmology, it's a rapid series of pictures documenting the circulation of the eye through the use of a fluorescent dye. The two dyes we're going to use are fluorescein, sodium fluorescein and endocyanin green. The sodium fluorescein is primarily used for retinal circulation, but can also be used to look at iris circulation. Endocyanine green is primarily for circulation of the choroid. Now let's look at the touch panel and the acquisition screen. The touch panel is going to let you change between different imaging modalities and also different settings during the acquisition phase. So when you look at your touch panel, initially this is what it will look like. On the bottom right side of the screen will be a start button. This button will start the camera. The touch, on the touch panel, any button that is bright blue is selected. In this case, infrared photography, um, the 50% intensity, 55 degrees, and so on. Any button with a yellow border around it, such as the movie button or the more button, means that there's a submenu under that button. In the More menu, you'll have the option to change the resolution, the image brightness, and also add more minus to the, uh, to the focus. So if your patient has more than a minus uh, 14, you can add up to another minus 12. So in essence, you could have minus 26 adapters of focus. Under the fixation light, you'll notice that there's nine internal fixation positions for your patient to look at, or you also have the choice to turn on the external fixation light. In the acquisition screen, you'll notice there'll be a little bit of redundancy from the touch panel. You can choose to change the resolution setting, the internal fixation light, or turn on and off the camera with your mouse. In the acquisition screen, you'll also notice on the bottom left will be the settings, the timers, and also the, amount of the number of images you've acquired. On the spectralis, you're going to have choices, a choice of several different lenses. The standard lens that comes with the machine is going to be the 30 degree lens. You also have the choice of having a 55 degree non-contact lens, the ultra wide field non-contact lens, or you can do a composite image. So the 30 degree lens gives you a um, standard image. You can zoom into 15 or 20 degrees if you'd like and it's non-contact. 55 degree lens, you can zoom into 25 or 30 degrees, it's also non-contact. And the ultra wide field lens is non-contact as well.
So prior to doing your angiography, you can take a couple different images on the spectralis. Um, the, the process to acquire the images is all the same, whether you're choosing to do an infrared image, a red free image, a multicolor image, or even a blue, feet, blue peak autofluorescence image. The first step is to align your camera. When you're aligning the camera, you want to make sure that each corner and each side of the photograph is evenly illuminated, so you don't want one side or, or the top or the bottom darker than the other side. You also want to make sure that your image is focused and that your exposure is correct, so you don't want your image too bright or too dark. The next thing you want to do once you have a nice, beautiful image is turn on the tracking system, or the tracking, uh, the automatic real time tracking. Uh, and by doing, to do that, you're going to actually just press the black sensitivity knob in on the touch panel. When everything looks nice and you're happy with the image, you're just going to press the acquire button. You can also use the foot pedal um, connected to the spectrals. After you've acquired the image, you want to turn off the tracking and then you can move on to your next, next set of images. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is acquiring the FA or the ICG, so actually the, the guts of the whole matter. Um, you can acquire the, the floor scene in a couple different ways. You can do it the traditional angiography method, which is just single photographs throughout the transit series. Um, and to do that, you're, all you're going to do is just press the acquisition button uh, multiple times as the die is floating into the eye. Your other option is collecting the transit uh, the transit phase of the angiography with a movie. So the movie, depending on the resolution setting, will give you somewhere between five and nine photographs a second. Um, it's important to remember that a single frame in the movie is the same as you just hitting the acquire button uh, manually. So the benefit of it is the doctor will have a lot more information during that transit phase as opposed to doing the traditional method where you'll get a photograph every second or so. So here's just a little, a couple images um, looking at the touch panel. You'll notice that um, the left side, the left image, is set up to do a single image um, angiography acquisition, so the traditional method. And the right side, you'll see that the movie button is bright blue, so we're set to do the movie method. Um, so you'll notice, again, the FA is selected, and also the difference between single and the movie. So setting up for the FA, the first thing you want to make sure of is that you have the fluorescein, the FA button, the fluorescein button uh, selected on the touch panel. If you don't see the fluorescein option, you just want to make sure that the filter wheel on the side of the camera is selected to A. Um, you want to make sure that on the touch panel you select movie mode and you want to make sure that your illumination isn't too bright. So usually somewhere around a uh, sensitivity of 80 is where you want to start, but that may vary based on the patient. The settings to do an ICG are very similar to the fluorescein. Number one, you want to make sure that the ICG button is selected, and again, if you do not see the option for your ICG, you'll just make sure you switch the filter wheel on the side of the camera to A. You want to make sure the movie button is selected. And again, just like the floor scene, you want to make sure that the sensitivity is somewhere around 80. One difference between the ICG and the FA is the, um, the intensity buttons up top on the top of the, the touch panel. On the fluorescein, the intensity is always 100%. When you're doing your ICG, you have the choice to alter that. So um, when you're starting your, floor, your ICG, um, it's a nice thing, to do, nice thing to do is to start your intensity at 75. Um, 
if the image gets too is too dark, you can always pump that up to 100%. If it's too bright at 75%, you can lower it down to 50. Um, and you also have the ability to use the sensitivity knob on the touch panel. So acquisition of the movie. To perform the movie, the first step you're going to do is align and focus the image and also adjust the intensity. So you want to have an evenly illuminated photograph corner to corner. You also want the picture to be um, well, well exposed. When the injection begins, you'll press the injection button. The injection button starts the timer. Once the guy comes into the eye, you're going to press the acquire button on the touch panel. And as the die enters the eye, you're going to play with the adjustment knob on the touch panel to make sure that the picture is not overexposed. Um, the important thing to remember is on the movie, there is a buffer set. Um, in general, the buffer is set to two seconds. So what that means is the move, when you press acquire on the touch panel, the system will acquire everything after you hit that button plus two seconds prior to it. So you're not, gonna, you're not um, in, in danger of missing any of the transit or the corridor phase of the angiography. Once all the vessels are full, you're going to press stop, which was formerly the acquire button, and that will stop the movie. So in essence, the goal is to have a movie that contains from uh, the choroidal phase all the way through full venous phase of the angiography as a movie. So here we're going to look at just a quick example of a fluorescein image, uh, transit phase, and you'll notice how quick it happened. So your movie won't be very long, but, but it's important to realize that you're going to see everything that happens in the eye um, during the transit phase. And here is the same tran uh, another transit phase, but with an ICG. So after you're done with your transit phase, uh, you're going to be doing the mids and the late phases of the angiography. The min and the late phases of the angiographies, whether it's FA or ICG, will be done as a single image. So just like you would on a normal camera. The steps to acquire the image are the same as when you're acquiring the images prior to the angiography. So the infrared, the multicolor images, the autofluorescence images. Um, you still want to make sure that you align the spectrals correctly. So you want even illumination, corner to corner on the photograph. You want to make sure the photograph is focused. So if you need to refocus at any point, you can do that. And you also want to make sure that the illumination or the exposure is correct. So you don't want the image too bright or too dark. Once you're happy with the way your image looks, you'll turn on the tracking by pressing the black sensitivity knob in. If you're happy with the way it looks, you can press acquire, which will acquire the image and then you'll turn off your tracking by pressing the black sensitivity knob again. So here's an example of um, an FAICG image simultaneously acquired um, during the late phase. And another example, this is done with the 55 degree lens, excuse me, the, uh, um, the 55 degree lens. Okay, at acquiring the single image, um, the single the single image uh, angiography is going to be the same as just acquiring uh, normal images. You're still going to make sure that your your photo, your uh, spectros is aligned correctly. You want to make sure that the image is focused, and you want to make sure that the exposure again is not too bright or too dark. When the injection starts, you'll press the injection button. And then start acquiring images 
um, as the die enters the eye. I usually, if I'm going to do the single image, I'll start acquiring images around 10 to 12 seconds. During this, this uh, using this, this method, you do not want to use a tracking in transit. Because things happen so fast, um, you don't want to miss anything by using the tracking. And again, you want to adjust the sensitivity knob and the focus if needed. The mid and the late phase photographs will be the same as the movie method. So you'll still do the single photographs, you'll use the tracking, um, and you'll acquire those images just like you would have with the other method. So performing the FAICG, um, one of the unique things about the spectralis is that you can actually do a fluorescein and an ICG test simultaneously. So you'll do one injection and you can do it um, all at the same time. So two things you want to notice um, is there's an FAICG button below um, the, the, the single ICG button option. Um, on the spectralis, the HRA OCT, the spectralis that includes the OCT, you may not see that initially. If you don't see the option down there for FAICG, if it says FA plus OCT, press the OCT button on the touch panel and that will change the settings so you can see FA plus ICT. The intensity on, in the FAICG set, uh, setting is only going to affect the brightness, the intensity of the ICG. Again, the fluorescence is always at 100%. So the intensity of the ICG will just control ICG brightness. So when you're doing your transit or your mid phase or your late phase and you're adjusting the exposure, you'll adjust the sensitivity knob on the touch panel, the black knob, to make the fluorescein image look well exposed. And then if the image if the ICG image at that point looks too bright or too dark, you can adjust with the intensity knob, intensity buttons on the touch panel. So here's an example of a fluorescein ICG simultaneously acquired. The fluorescein is on the left and the ICG is on the right. Here's an example of an FA and an ICG. And again, the FA is on the left, fluorescein, the uh, FA is on the left, and the ICG is on the right. So performing an a angiography image with an OCT is, is very simple. It's the same technique that you would use when you're acquiring a normal infrared plus OCT image. Um, the only other, the only difference is what photograph you're choosing. So below IROCT, you'll notice there's fluorescein plus OCT and ICGA plus OCT. And here's an example of a fluorescein image with a simultaneously acquired OCT. You'll notice it's it's very similar to what you would get with a normal IR plus OCT, except you have a fluorescein image. Here's another example. This time we have an ICG image with the OCT. So now we're going to talk about creating an overview report. So when you're done with your floor scene and you've collected all your images, you'll just click the Save Images button up top. And once everything's saved, you can click the exit button. Once you exit out, you're going to enter this screen, which is the image viewing window. The image viewing window is where you're going to actually be able to see all of your images you've acquired. You'll notice uh, the button up there that is the display icon. So that is how you're going to get to the image window. Below is the light box. So the light box is what we're going to use to create our print out. So when you're doing, when you're setting up to do your, uh, your printout, you can actually right click on the movie and 
click expand. And when it expands, it'll open up the movie and you'll see every single frame of that movie. And all you need to do is just left click and drag the images you'd like down to the light box. You can also double left click on the movie and open up the movie and scroll through with the slider the entire movie. Whenever you see a frame that you want to include on your printout, you can just click the add to current add current frame to the light box and that will just drop that frame right into the light box and, and you'll be able to print from that. So either either method, expanding the movie or opening the movie and, and using the add current frame to light box button will allow you to drop everything to the light box and and then you can just left click and select all of the images. Then right click on one of the selected images and choose print. Once you choose print, you'll have the option of how many images you'd like on a page. Just remember, the lower the number, the larger the pictures. So if your if your physicians or clinicians that you work with like to have bigger pictures, you can choose to have less images on a page and you'll just get multiple pages. And this is what your printout will look like. So now let's look at a couple of more example images. Um, here's a macular hole, uh, an early early phase. And here's with some dye. This is a CSR patient. And a little bit later into the angiography. This is a composite image, so this is a wide field image. We use a third degree lens to acquire the images and we just panned out and used the software to stitch those two images together. This is the 55 degree lens uh, used to take a mid phase of a central serous uh, retinopathy patient. And here is the fluorescein image with the 3D OCT. This is an ICG image of android streaks. And another example of an ICG image. Here's a combination fluorescein plus ICG. And the um, uh, fluorescein and ICG combination using the ultra wide field lens. So you can see how how incredibly wide that, that image is taken. Okay, so if you have any questions uh, while you're doing your angiographies or, or after listening to this um, or later on today and you, you want to get some more information uh, or some help on, on specific questions, you can feel free to call our 1-800 number and choose option 2 and that will take you to the helpline. Um, you can also access our clinical uh, clinical tools, articles and guides, webinars, and and more educational information on our website, www.heidelbergengineering.com, or you can feel free to email us. Thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take any questions.